Hello TypeScript fans, today you will become experts in writing modules because in this video you will learn what is actually a module, what's the difference from a script to a module. You will also learn all the different ways how to export code in a module. Yeah, there are named exports, then there are default exports, we'll also cover export statements and then on the import side we'll also look at how to get something imported with a name or with a namespace and then we will check out how to rename your imports or also how to rename your exports, how to rename them that they are compatible with previous APIs and we will also check how to load something as a side effect. Saying that there is a lot to learn today but by the end of it you will become a professional with writing a module yourself. So we will start out with a common JS module, yeah that's the de facto standard in Node.js but later on we will transfer that CommonJS module into an ECMAScript module so you will learn how to make the transition and you will also hear about the history of the modules because first there was CommonJS or the Node.js environments but then there was the asynchronous module definition to achieve something similar for browsers and later on, which is now, we um, are going to see the world of the ECMAScript modules. So ECMA International created a standard that works for Node.js, Dino and browsers and that's now the thing that um, everyone talks about and you will also understand how to use it. So let's go. Let's start with two simple functions. We have an add function that creates the sum of two numbers and a subtract function that subtracts one number from the other. The TypeScript compiler configuration is also fairly simple. We will use the common JS model system, which defines how our modules will be resolved. And we will ask the TypeScript compiler to put our code in a separate disk directory with strict type check enabled and the compatibility to ES2016 and beyond. Having the basic project set up in place, we can now add the export keyword to the add and subtract function, which will turn our script into a module because we are now making use of an export. Everything that uses an export and import is considered to be a module. So main TS is also a module that imports now from the mass TS file. So we can reuse the add and subtract function in here. While typing, the command to compile our code, I want to highlight that we have a relative import because we give the relative pass to our module dot slash mass and we have a named import because we have to make sure that the name for the imports is the same as for the exports. If we check now the disk directory, we can see the main.js file that was being compiled from our TypeScript code and as you can see, it uses a require statement because we defined to use the common JS module syntax which means that require is the way to go to import a module. With Node version 18, require is still the way to go to because CommonJS is the original way to package code in Node.js. So I can create legacy JavaScript code and in this code I will be also able to import the module that we just transpiled from TypeScript. So I can create a const, add and subtract here, I require it then from the mass.js file, yeah, the compiled code from our TypeScript code and that will give me then the possibility to execute also these functions here. So I can add 1 to 1336 and I can add also 1 or subtract 1 from 1000. If I execute that legacy code here we will see that it simply works because the code was transpiled correctly from TypeScript to JavaScript and with the CommonJS module syntax. Let's talk about named imports and default imports. Named imports require that you use the name that was being used when exporting a function. So you can't just write adding here, you have to use the name which was defined when exporting the function. So in this case it was add. Opposite to this are the default exports. So with the keyword default we can define the default export which is here in that case the add function and then on the consumer side we can import it with any name that we like. In this case I can use the name adding and it's worth mentioning that default imports don't use the destructuring syntax so 
don't write it in the curly braces, just write it as you would define a constant. Yeah, just use the name and then you can use any name you like. Of course, no duplicated name, but you can call it, for example, XYZ, ABC, whatever you like, as long as you haven't defined this name somewhere else. I also have to mention that there can only be one default export per module. So if you want to export multiple things like functions and constants, then use the named exports. Let's talk about an alternative exporting syntax called export statements. With export statements, we can define an object shape. And in here, we declare then what we want to export. For example, our add and subtract method. And this way we can remove the keyword export from the functions and have them all combined here in a single line. Hey, we've just learned when to use a default export and when to use a named export. Now let's look at the case where you want to rename an export. Export statements are very useful to also rename our exports. So we've seen that we have an add function, but we can export it actually with the name adding by just using the as keyword. And the same with subtract. Imagine we would have a subtract version two then we can say, okay, let's import subtract version two, but on the consumer still imported with the subtract name to not break the API contract. So if you have people relying on an import on subtract, then we can now expose the new subtract version two method with the name of subtract by using the renaming functionality of this export statement. It will make our code backward compatible for everyone who was using still the subtract. Vice versa, we can also change to a completely new name and then force our consumers to also update their names. So here I renamed the export to adding. So I have to import it also with the name of adding. So let me just switch here that name and we will be good again. Last but not least, I can use the S keyword also on the consumer side. So if we, for example, have an add function that we are importing, then we can also rename it for ourselves by just adding s in the import statement and then giving it a name that we would like to use. In the case here, I'm renaming add to adding or I'm using the adding function and rename it to add to then use it here in my code on the consumer side. Welcome back and congratulations to make it up until here. And with your newly acquired knowledge, we can go into namespace imports because sometimes you don't want to import just a specific thing, but many things at once. And that's what we are going to look at now. Namespace imports allow us to put all our imports under one umbrella. So I will show that here. I will use that wildcard that is part of a namespace import. And I will say that I want to import everything under the name of mass. I can then prefix my imports with mass. So that's my namespace. And I can say, okay, from mass, I want to have the add function. And from mass, I also want to call the subtract function. Of course, I can rename it. So the name is of my choice. I can also call it our mass if I like. Namespace imports are very useful when you have modules that export functions with the same name. For example, we have an add function exported by the mass module, but we can also have an add function exported from another module. I will just name the file here add, and there we also have an export function with the name add. And we'll see that there's a duplicate identifier that we have to solve somehow because we can't import the same thing twice. That's what namespace imports were made for, so we can import the first add here with also our wildcard from the mass namespace. And then we will say that the other add functionality will get from their mass as a namespace. So we have two namespaces. In this case, I will just rename it to our mass and their mass. So we can prefix the first function with our mass and we will prefix the second function with the namespace of their mass. So that way we can import twice a function called add but just with a different prefix 
and a different contract here in terms of how the function is going to be used. Of course, we can always look at how things should be in the best possible way, but sometimes you have to support legacy code as well. Oh. This is where we have, for example, the case of side effect imports. Yeah, you want to import a legacy JavaScript uh, library for its side effects to have a global variable available, for example. Yeah, this can be a case, and this case is what we will check out now. I brought some legacy JavaScript code with me, which writes to the global object and assigns it a variable called my framework number. And it also logs something to the console when we execute the script. And now I want to use the code here from the legacy script in my TypeScript code. I could think, hey, let's use that namespace import and just import everything from legacy. But first of all, I have to allow JavaScript here to be used with TypeScript. This can be done by setting allow.js to true. And then I will be able to use JavaScript files as part of my TypeScript program. But we still have another problem that the legacy JS script is not a module. Because if we remember, modules need an import or an export and I don't have anything like this in here. So I can quick fix that by just creating an export and I will leave it empty because I just need an export statement, but I don't need to actually export something. So now my script is a module, but I still can not really use it because a namespace import doesn't actually import all the code. It just gives me access to it through a namespace. So it is a very common mistake to think, well, with import star, I import everything right away, but if I don't make use of it, if I don't use the legacy namespace, TypeScript will be smart enough to detect that it's not being used and it will just remove that code from the compiled output. Let me show this to you by executing the compiler and the compiler will create the main.js file for us. And in the main.js file, we will see that the console log statement from our legacy code is not here and also the assignment to the global object is not here. When we execute now the compiled version, then of course we won't see anything on the console as the code simply is missing. If we really want to import the legacy code for its side effect, then we need to make use of just the import keyword followed by the pass to the module. We can see that it is a JavaScript file in here. And if we then remove the namespace import because we're not making use of the namespace, then we will load actually the code behind the legacy JS file, which I'm compiling now. And then when we execute it, we will see that the main JS file loads everything that comes with the legacy JS file, which for example is our console log statement. To double check that, I will open the main JS file again. And here we see the require statement. Remember we are in a common JS universe and the require function here will require the legacy JS file, which comes with the console log statement that we've just seen on our actual console when executing the main.js script. I also want to highlight that I have a video about the global object. So if you're interested what is global and what is global this in TypeScript and in Node.js or in the browser, then just follow my video link here to also see that. We have seen how we can import the legacy code for its side effects. But this code here also ships an adjustment to the global object, which is called my framework number. And if we want to make use of this my framework number from the global object in TypeScript, then we will get to see an error because the global dis doesn't have an index signature in this case. So we need to extend the declaration of the global object. We can extend existing declarations with declare and then we write module global to extend the global object. And then here we will just define that there is a my framework number of type number. On top of this, we need to declare it as a const so that we are able to read this constant and log it to the console. As we all know, constants are read only, so we can't assign new values to them, which means we need to change it to var in order to make my framework number writable. 
If you watched my content up until here, then you are now an expert with CommonJS modules. Let's level up your knowledge by converting a CommonJS module into an ECMAScript module. So far, we've been using the CommonJS module system, which is why we had that defined in our compiler options. And we exposed our add and our subtract function through an export statement. When compiling the code, TypeScript will then create JavaScript code for us that uses the CommonJS module syntax. We can see that in the this directory, if we have a look at the mass.js file, then we can see that the exports assignment is being used and that we then have also on the import side the possibility to use the require function to require then functionality from that module. To briefly validate that the code is working, let's see if add and subtract do what they are supposed to do. So indeed, yeah, the number will go up and if we subtract, the number will go down. Now I want to do the switch to the ES module syntax. So we will set our module system to ES next and then we will see that the compiled output will be different. So if I start the compiler, the resulting JavaScript will look almost like our initial TypeScript code because it uses now the new ES module syntax. But it also means that we have to adjust our imports because they are still relying on CommonJS syntax. Saying that, our legacy code will actually break now because it can't make use of an ES module. We will get the syntax error that the export token is unknown to this legacy code. To solve that, we have to upgrade the package that is using our legacy code. So in our main package JSON, we need to change our type to module because the default is CommonJS. So I can also write CommonJS in here, or I can just leave it out as it is the default, but we are now switching to the ES module syntax. So let's put in the type and see what happens. Well, we still have the problem that the require is not defined with ES modules. So we have to also adjust the actual code. Luckily, the reference error already tells us what to do because we need to use import instead in the code that is importing the ES module. Now that we are changing the import and that we have also compiled everything to ES next and put the type of module into the package JSON, it runs just fine because Node.js will think now, yeah, we are fully ESM compatible. So that's with Node version 18, by the way, and TypeScript version 4.9.4. If at some point you feel lost with TypeScript, then I have a website for you, which is TypeScript TV, because I'm building that since some years. And here you will find a glossary that tells you about a lot of terminology around JavaScript and also around specifically TypeScript. So you will get to see what are all these things like type guards, type narrowing and so on and so forth. And even better for the ones that run into errors, I have a section about errors where you can just pick any of the TypeScript compiler errors, like 1,363, yeah? And then you see what is the broken code, why is it broken, and how to fix it. So have fun with TypeScript and let me know if you need help because it's a great language and I'm looking forward to support you with that.